So welcome to Midtown Connect, sponsored by MidtownMemphis.org. We are a community-driven nonprofit. We promote economic development, cultural activities, and the historical integrity of Midtown Memphis. I'm Portia Stevens, and this afternoon, Midtown Connects is excited to have a conversation with the first female president of Rhodes College. I tell you one really cool thing about Midtown is our parkways, right? So if you are a true Midtowner, you know, it's a real experience if you're driving down North Parkway. So you get to ride through um, the neighborhoods where a lot of historical homes are. So you go through about, you know, three or four historic neighborhoods based on where you're coming from on North Parkway. You'll roll past the Memphis Zoo and one of the most beautiful college campuses in the world, if I must say so myself, is Rhodes College. And Dr. Haas, I tell you, we are so excited to have you on Midtown Connects this afternoon. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here and I was thrilled to learn a little bit more about the organization and just appreciate your leadership. You are welcome. We're a community organization. So we're all about talking with our neighbors and Rhodes College is a Midtown anchor. So we'll start off by asking, you know, how, you know if you can share with us the role Rhodes College play with Midtown residents and the business community. Thank you so much for uh, having me here. And I love that phrase, Midtown Anchor. We really identify ourselves in that way as well. I, I think you all know that Rhodes sees itself as um, just so intimately connected with uh, with the fate of our uh, both immediate neighbors and with our, our broader city. We take that as both a challenge and a responsibility. Uh, we understand that we have to be uh, very good neighbors as well and um, think about the community as we make decisions for the, for the college. And we also, as I said, see it as an incredible challenge. How do we um, sort of provide our students with as much exposure and access and uh, connection to the city as possible? So we are focused on all the things that you've talked about. We certainly are uh, an important, um, contributor to the overall economy. We have done uh, our most recent economic impact study shows that we're responsible for about $316 million worth of uh, Memphis, Memphis revenue. So keeping that money right here in our community and circulating it through. Um, but we also think about our role as a cultural hub and we look for ways to share those cultural resources with our neighbors, um, inviting people on for performances, for lectures, et cetera. And we see ourselves as um, an important um, help, help helping shape the thought around how the city develops. So we're we're pleased to participate in all of those areas. Awesome, awesome. Kudos to that. Well, you know, it's spring break around here. I've got a high schooler in the house. She's on spring break. I hear, you know, on the news down in Florida, they were expecting a lot of spring breakers. So if you would share with us, is, is Rhodes on spring break right now? Well, fortunately, Rhodes did not have a spring break this year, and we did that intentionally. Um, all of us are thinking about a year ago when Rhodes and others were on spring break, and that was when we made the very difficult decision uh, to move to remote learning. We were among the first institutions in Rhodes, in, in Memphis, to really have to grapple with that decision, and it was it was quite a challenging one for us at the time. A year later, we have revised our spring calendar to limit um, student travel and travel opportunities this spring. Um, and we um, we have made it you know, really clear that we are thinking about how to preserve safety. So we have done a very aggressive um, testing, tracking, um, and uh, quarantining program on campus. Everyone who comes onto our campus is tested at least weekly this spring. That has been a little bit sort of sad for us because it has meant we have had to not host as many cultural events as we're used to hosting. We've moved some of those online and we can talk about some of those if you want. Um, but it has meant that we've been able to keep our campus as safe as possible from COVID and ensure that our students can learn and our faculty and staff can work in safety. Awesome. So now tell us, you know, what was it like for you as the president of a college to be able to manage COVID? I mean, you know, like to transition from, you know, in person to remote learning, like how fast were you all able to even make that transition? <laughs> we we had to make those decisions very quickly. We were on spring break a year ago when the very first 
cases began to appear in Memphis. We met with medical advisors. They told us that uh, given the rate of expansion of what was still a virus we were all just hearing about and given its prevalence in uh, Memphis, we would need to assume that we would have cases on campus. And we quickly saw that at that point, we were not equipped to deal with that. And the medical infrastructure in Memphis wasn't, wouldn't have been equipped to, to assist us at that point either. So we knew this decision had to be made. Our students, as you know, at Rhodes come from all over the world. We have students from every state, students from multiple countries. And so when they're traveling on spring break, they're everywhere and bringing them back to campus we felt would not be a safe option. So the once we understood what we were facing, the decision became very clear. But then as you can imagine, and again, just thinking back to where we were a year ago, the cascade of decisions that need to be made. And we put together a core team and we began making decision, decision, decision. We're very fortunate Rhodes that we have such a strong tradition of shared governance. So our student leaders, faculty leaders, staff leaders um, joined me in really helping to, you know, we had a kind of a core group that was focused um, that included representatives from all those groups to help us navigate how to do it in a, in a way. And most importantly, we were guided at every step by a set of values that we identified on that very first day. And those were to make sure that we kept health and safety at the forefront of our minds that we made sure that the student educational uh, experience continued to be outstanding, that we uh, were really focused on our commitment to equity and diversity and inclusion, and that we were gonna have that be in our minds as we made each decision, rather than something we had to circle back at the end um, to do, and that we would continue to invest in the quality and excellence of our students and our faculty and staff. So here we stand a year later um, certainly, you know, bent and bowed, but not broken at all. And we have having a wonderful admissions year. We have kept all of our faculty and staff in every level employed this year. And um, we are managing so far the health and safety issues. Awesome. That's good. So, so, you know, with all of that being said, what is the value of a Rhodes liberal arts education. I know you're a big advocate for liberal arts education. So share with us, what's the value there? I, I measure the value in a multiplicity of ways. The most important thing is what that students who graduate from Rhodes graduate with what we call the Rhodes edge. And that means that they have a leg up, if you will, um, intellectually, they're very, very well educated. Our faculty make sure of that. This is a, a challenging curriculum. Our students are also really prepared to lead and serve. And much of that is because of the experience they have serving in Memphis and because of the internship opportunities. And they are really prepared to launch their careers. So we see that kind of holistic preparation as the essence of what we offer. And the liberal arts um, is the cornerstone of that. Um, our students also, we know, have an economic advantage. Um, we're, our, our graduates are among the highest paid uh, employees in Tennessee, for example, and do very well nationally as well. But we don't measure the true impact of a Rhodes education simply by what it does for an individual student, although we think that's an incredible investment on the parts of those students. We measure the impact of a Rhodes education by what our students are prepared to do for the world. And so it's those broader outcomes that to me are the value of a Rhodes education. Good deal, good deal. So what's new, what's happening on the campus? Any improvements, any new construction plans? Well, there's a lot of exciting things happening on campus and we have tried very hard to not let uh, COVID get in the way of our moving forward. So we were committed from the beginning to make sure that we came through this crisis stronger and better and healthier as an institution. And I, I'm pleased to say we're on track with that. We are in conversations now about a new uh, residence hall. Uh, and our board will be meeting later this spring to kind of put the final touches on that. And the plan is intended to uh, be mostly single rooms that will house upper class students, uh, juniors and seniors. Uh, and it will also include some new spaces for our voices groups, which is uh, our uh, kind of collective group for our students that focus on diversity, inclusion, uh, and equity. They will have a new home in a in a lodge uh, uh, um, attached to this to this building. So there's a lot of excitement about that on campus as we start to think about the planning for that. 
Awesome. I tell you, like I said at first, uh, Rhodes College has one of the most beautiful campuses I have ever seen. And I've lived in five different markets, I tell you. And, you know, my daughter swim was a part of the summer swim team. So that was our spot, uh-huh. our hangout spot. I'm on so Rhodes glad. College during the summertime, you know. Well, so. we're hoping that vaccines and other things will make it possible for us to welcome students, you know, young people back on campus and dog walkers and all. We love having the community on our campus. And as you say, it is right, you know, it's not just you and I that think that. It is regularly named in national publications as among the most beautiful campuses. It is really a, tre- a treasure. Uh, I like to say that our outer beauty is a sign of our inner beauty at there Rome. You go. And so the, you know, those those buildings signify, I think, a commitment to excellence, a commitment to quality, and a commitment to both uh, tradition and to making sure that we are focused on continuous improvement. And the fact that you guys are right there next to Snowden School, that was always a good time for my my kid to come over, yeah. um, say for Halloween, she would come over to the Rhodes campus to trunk to, to, to trick or treat. So, you know, you guys have we been great that. neighbors. Well, yeah. all of, thank you very much. It's so meaningful for our students and it's so important to them, you know, to know that they're part of a community, that it isn't, yeah. uh, Rhodes is not just an isolated campus on the hill. When you come to Rhodes, even as a first year student, you're a Memphian and you need to embrace that and you need to feel a sense of both pride and responsibility in that. And we really try to focus our students on that. And even in this year, of you know remote learning and even in all of these things our students have continued to volunteer in the city continued to be able to be um interns continued to think of memphis as uh, a place that matters to them well i want to personally thank you for your um service and your commitment to our city um, I know that you are moving on to another opportunity um, and, and, and also that you have a new book that's coming out and you're going back into the classroom teaching a seminar. So, so briefly share with us all this good stuff that's happening for you right now. And there is. It's very exciting personally, although I'll tell you, um, moving from Memphis, my husband and I have descri- described this as an expansion and not a separation because we good really... Deal will uh, carry, Ro- you know, the good news about Rhodes and the good news about Memphis everywhere we go. It's a tremendous city and, and we will continue to be personally and professionally engaged and invested here. So thank you very much. I know that, you know, the new leadership of Rhodes, when that is established, will be equally committed because that is now really knit into the fabric of Rhodes. It doesn't just depend on the whim of one person, even if that person is the president. Our um, Lynn and Henry Turley Memphis Center is an endowed center. It is here into perpetuity. Our strategic plan really talks about and focuses on the next decade of engagement with the community. So these kinds of um, initiatives are things that uh, presidents get to carry forward, but they are bigger than any one person, even any one president. So more to come. And I know you'll, you'll give the next president the same very warm welcome that I have, I have received. Hey, hopefully you won't be the first female. We're looking forward I, to I more understand. Right. Hopefully I won't be the the exactly. Well, I always like the to say that female is what I'm know, saying. Last female. Too, the I'm last sorry. female. In my career, I like to say that I have been very blessed to walk through a lot of doors as a first woman, as the first Jewish person in many positions that I've held. And my goal is always to hope to hold those doors open wider behind me. So I'm very proud of the uh, people we've brought to Rhodes while I've been here. And I, I think they uh, increasingly represent our student body and represent our, our community as well. She power is what I call it. <laughs> yes, I love that. I love that. And you know that Gary Campbell is our representative to this group. Exactly. And We couldn't do better. She is a Rhodes alum, I do point out to you. Exactly, 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 exactly. So of course we will keep Carrie in the fold with us. We so love her and appreciate the work she's doing over at Rhodes College. So Dr. Madri Haas, thank thank you so so much. So much, Portia, what a pleasure this was. It's good to see you. Be well, stay healthy. Be well as well. Thank you. All right, bless you. Carrie, you're muted. (laughs) That was great, Portia. Uh, You're welcome. (laughs) I was juggling. I don't know what it looks like. I'm sure Emily's got me looking fabulous. (laughs) (laughs) 
phone and computer. <laughs> and thank, thank you, you. colleagues for joining. President Haas was so happy to see your friendly faces. <laughs> that was so yeah, fun. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for letting us come by. Yeah, it was fun. I, I mean, like, it was fun, but now I'm even more upset that she's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> no, I already was. <laughs> you know, these are two of my colleagues in my division, but we start together on the digital engagement committee. So the folks that help bring those events to life that I shared on our community calendar are these folks. Our faculty bring the speakers, but as far as getting them out into the world wide web and helping yeah. them with the quality and the mediums is these folks. Thank you. Good seeing you all. Thank you all <laughs> Thank so, you much. so much. This is so fun. So Carrie, we will post this and we'll post you all's link on our website as well. Awesome. Okay. Thank you guys. Bye y'all. Bye. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Karen. Bye. Bye. <laughs>